New polling from the New York Times, of all places, suggests that Democrats have been living in a progressive fantasy world if they believe that they are likely to defeat President Trump in 2020, which makes sense if Democrats believe other fantasies like the narrative that Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. We will examine how the left can be so gullible when nobody believes the press. Then an ex-evangelical pastor who left his church, family, and faith is lecturing evangelicals on how they're ruining Christianity. Finally, the mayor of Tent City, Los Angeles, claims with a straight face that LA is the model city for dealing with homelessness. All that and more. I'm Michael Knowles, and this is The Michael Knowles Show. <music> LA is the model city for dealing with homelessness, just like Krispy Kreme is the model company for dealing with obesity. We'll get to that. Unbelievable that they can say this. That's the whole theme. People say with a straight face narratives and storylines that nobody actually believes. Beginning with probably the, uh, the biggest storyline, the most ridiculous narrative, the craziest, wildest conspiracy theory of the last several years, the idea that Jeffrey Epstein was just like randomly permitted to kill himself. Nobody actually believes that, right? There is a former Navy SEAL who went on Jesse Waters' show on Fox News, and he was talking about military dogs because of the story of, of Conan, that dog who chased down Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. So it's a completely nice, normal segment about military dogs. And then at the end, he just sneaks in a, a little bit of a, a fact and a little bit of a meme, which is that Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Well, thank you for training Nero, who's uh, to your left there, and uh, I'm sure he's ready to go out on the next mission, and he can't wait. So thank you and thank Nero for your service. I appreciate it. Absolutely. If, if I could, could I throw a PSA out real quick? Real quick. Uh, just the, the remarkable nature of these dogs and, and them being highlighted in the news creates a, a huge demand by people that, that frankly shouldn't have them. If, uh, if you see the, the coverage and you decide, I want one of these dogs, either buy a finished, trained, uh, you know, fully trained and, and finished dog from a professional uh, or just, just don't get one at all. Um, and Epstein didn't kill himself. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that commentary. All right. <laughs> just the greatest Fox News guest in all of history. I say this with no false modesty. I've, I've been a guest on Fox News a hundred times and probably closer to 200 times. This man is the greatest Fox News guest ever. I bow down to you, sir. Really, really well done. Totally straight face. And then he slips in this line. Also, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. What he's saying is not just something that we all believe to be true. He's saying an internet meme. This has become a meme to just give a narrative, state a number of random facts, maybe historical facts, and then at the end, as a non sequitur, say, also Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. Or even you try to fit it in so you can tie it in. So for instance, yesterday I, I tweeted out, I said, on this day, 608 years ago, Khalil Sultan, the Timurid ruler of Transoxiana, died at the age of 27. Shortly thereafter, his wife committed suicide, which distinguishes her from Jeffrey Epstein, who did not kill herself. This has been going around the internet for several days now. And it's not just that it's very funny. It's that these memes do tell us something about the culture and the, the media. So uh, another one that was going around, uh, oh, I also tweeted out, I said, uh, L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. V is very, very extraordinary. E is for the fact that Epstein didn't kill himself. Another one was a, a just a block of text. It said, if I have to see one more Jeffrey Epstein meme, I'm literally going to kill myself. Unlike Epstein, who was obviously murdered. Uh, another one, a fun fact. The topaz hummingbird is the smallest bird in the world. Even though it has the smallest bird brain in existence, it knows that Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. And then this one might be my favorite. The babirusa is a wild pig whose tusks can grow so long they curve backwards, ultimately impaling their skulls and accidentally killing them, unlike Jeffrey Epstein, who was killed on purpose. <laughs> Why are the memes so popular? Why did this guy go on Fox News and put that in at the end of his segment? Two reasons. There are exactly two reasons for this. I will tell you both of those reasons in one second, but first I've got to thank our friends over at Zip Recruiter. Hiring can be a very slow, arduous, brutal process. Cafe Altura's COO, Dylan Miskowitz, 
needed to hire a director of coffee for his organic coffee company. He was having trouble finding qualified applicants, so he turned to Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. This is the key. Zip Recruiter finds the candidates for you. You know, old hiring technology is basically like taking a big handful of spaghetti and you just throw it at the wall and you try to see what sticks. That's not how ZipRecruiter works. We're living in the 21st century. Act like it. In its technology identifies people with the right experience. It then invites them to apply to your job. So you get qualified candidates fast. Dylan posted his job on ZipRecruiter. He said he was impressed by how quickly he had great candidates apply. He then used ZipRecruiter's candidate rating feature to filter his cap applicants so that he could just focus on the most relevant ones. And that's how Dylan found his new director of coffee in just a few days. Obviously here at the Michael Knowles Show, we need to find directors of Covfefe pretty regularly because we just got to keep it going through our veins. You got to use ZipRecruiter when you want to do that. With results like that, it is no wonder that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within just the first day. Super important. So right now, my listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S. That is ZipRecruiter.com slash Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, ZipRecruiter.com slash Knowles. Why are the Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself memes so popular? Two reasons. One, we can't trust the mainstream media. Two, we can't trust the mainstream media. Those are the two reasons. They're actually different. What do I mean? The media tell us that it was a suicide. We know that the media are in bed with politicians. We know that the media are in bed with some of Jeffrey Epstein's clients and staff members. We know that corporate interests play a role in the media as well. We know that the mainstream media have abdicated their duty as journalists, and so we can't rely on them to tell the truth. Actually, James O'Keefe just showed this today in a breaking story about Jeffrey Epstein. We'll get to that in one second. So the, the first reason is we can't trust the mainstream media to give us the straight news. The other reason that the memes are popular is that we can't trust the mainstream media and therefore we need to turn to memes because memes beat the mainstream media. Memes beat the mainstream media because they're a way to spread information outside the traditional bounds of the traditional press. This was hugely effective in 2016. President Trump was the meme king. He didn't start this. He, he just, because he's a product of the popular culture, because he's extraordinarily good at manipulating the media, he became part of this organic grassroots media campaign that used internet memes. Elizabeth Warren right now is trying to capture this same thing and it's not working. She's got her own meme team. Not going to work. Never going to work. She's not built for memes. Why not? Because the mainstream media love Elizabeth Warren. The whole thing about memes is they've got to be countercultural. The whole thing about counterculture is it's got to constantly use changing lingo. It's got to be subversive. It has to be unapproved. It can't be the main storyline being pushed by the media. Liz Warren has cheerleaders everywhere from the major news outlets all the way to Saturday Night Live. So the memes are never going to catch on for her, but they will for Donald Trump. This was a major joke in 2016 is you had this comparison and an image of CNN or, you know, the kind of corporate media. And it said, who do you think would win in a fight? The establishment, press, deep state, federal bureaucracy, international corporate interests. And then it had a photo of Alex Jones. It said, or a shirtless vitamin salesman screaming on the radio. And it turns out Alex Jones, because Trump won and <laughs> Jones was considered one of the deplorable people who was backing Donald Trump. And that's hilarious. And that actually became a meme in and of itself. The memes are not just for entertainment. The memes are actually an effective way to spread information and to subvert a mainstream media that is totally corrupt. I did a speech for YAF at USC, this is probably a month or so ago, called The Mainstream Media or Fake News. I just outlined very briefly some of the connections between the press and the Democratic Party and the mainstream left and the deep state and the bureaucracy and the government. The speech was like 40 minutes long, and I didn't even come close to describing all of the connections. It is totally corrupted from within. Now, James O'Keefe, investigative independent journalist, actually has some new recordings on the Epstein affair. He got a, a hot mic 
from ABC News anchor Amy Robach, who was describing how for three years she tried to report on the Epstein story. She had information on it, and her bosses at ABC News killed the story. I've had the story for three years. I've had this interview with Virginia Roberts. We would not put it on the air. Um, first of all, I was told, who's Jeffrey Epstein? No one knows who that is. This is a stupid story. Um, then the palace found out that we had her whole allegations about Prince Andrew and threatened us a million different ways. Um, we were so afraid we wouldn't be able to interview Kate and Will say, oh, that we that also quashed the story. Yeah. And then um, and then Alan Dershowitz was also implicated in because of the planes. So she told me everything. She had pictures. She had everything. She was in hiding for 12 years. We convinced her to come out. We convinced her to talk to us. Um, it was unbelievable what we had. Clinton. We had everything. I, I tried for three years to get it on to no avail, and now it's all coming out, and it's like these new re revelations, and I freaking had all of it. I, I, I'm so pissed right now. Like, every day I get more and more pissed because I'm just like, oh my God. We, it was, um, what, what we had was unreal. Other women backing it up. Hey, yep. Brad Edwards, the attorney, three years ago saying, like, aunt, like, we, there will come a day when we will realize Jeffrey Epstein was the most prolific pedophile this country has ever known. And I had it all three years ago. She had it all three years ago and her bosses wouldn't let her run it. So this is a hot mic. She's obviously complaining to, I don't know, her producer or somebody on the set about how the Epstein story broke and she could have broke it three years ago. And her job is to break stories. So it would have been very helpful to her professionally. And the story got killed. Did the story get killed because, oh, nobody knows who Jeffrey Epstein is. No, of course not. The point of the news is to break the news, is to do investigations and dig up stories that people haven't heard about and then convey those stories. But that's not what they did. They said, oh, it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. Did they shut it down for that reason or did they shut it down because of very, very powerful people, perhaps in ABC News, insisted that they shut it down because it wouldn't look good for them? Certainly the latter. And so now you have this meme, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. And the reaction of the mainstream media, the reaction of people in the establishment is to say, oh, don't say it. that's ridiculous. Don't traffic in that sort of nonsense. That's a conspiracy theory. Maybe. But what ABC News and the rest of the mainstream media did by covering up the story for three years is an actual conspiracy. So <laughs> forgive us for trafficking in a conspiracy theory when we have hard evidence that you guys actually engaged in a conspiracy. I said this when the Epstein story broke. I said, I don't know how Jeffrey Epstein died. He very well might have killed himself. What I do know though, is that the least plausible explanation for how Jeffrey Epstein died is that he just accidentally was permitted to kill himself because he, he shouldn't have been able to do it anyway. He tried to kill himself, apparently, six days earlier. He was then taken off of suicide watch. Or he was taken off, he tried to kill himself a couple weeks earlier. He was taken off of suicide watch six days later. Then at the time that he allegedly killed himself, both of the guards who were supposed to check on him just fell asleep, coincidentally, at exactly the same time. And then not one but two cameras outside of his cell just, just didn't work. They just malfunctioned at exactly the same time. And then he it was revealed in the autopsy, had a couple bones, few bones broken in his neck that only appear in about 1% of hangings and certainly not from a, a, a height at, at which he would have had to hang himself with his bed. And it was much more in line with strangulation. But hey, listen, don't ask any of those questions. Don't ever traffic in that kind of crazy conspiracy theory. Just ignore the actual conspiracy of the mainstream media. This is why the memes work. And I've got a big warning here for the left. If the left wing does not shape up, if the left does not stop spreading lies, if the left does not stop covering up stories on the mainstream media through its outlets, through its establishment candidates, it's going to lose again. It's going to lose again in 2020 without question, because the more corrupt the mainstream media becomes, the more empowered everybody else feels to spread their own information and to believe their own information. And there is a lot of fake information on the internet. There's that famous picture of Abraham Lincoln and the quote says, don't believe everything you read on the internet. Abraham Lincoln, 1860. There's a lot of false information on the internet. 
in a, in an honest culture, in a culture where the media are actually reporting the facts, people have no need to believe whatever they read on the internet. But in a culture where ABC News, CBS News, let's not forget Cheryl Atkinson, great investigative reporter. Cheryl Atkinson had to leave CBS News because her bosses kept killing stories on Obama's corruption. Where the New York Times, the Washington Post are just shamelessly spreading lies every single day. In that culture, people have to believe what they read on the internet because they have nowhere else to turn. We'll get into what this means for 2020 in a second, but first I've got to thank our friends over at Rock Auto. You know me. You know I'm not exactly the most hands-on kind of mechanic, active, fixer-upper guy in the world, okay? I don't know very much about fixing up my house. I certainly don't know anything about fixing up my car. So what I do is when my car breaks down, I go to the auto parts store and I say, okay, I don't know. I need the doohickey for the whatever underneath the hood. And then the auto parts store never has the part. All they do is then they go on the internet and they look up the part and then they charge me a huge markup to get the car part. You don't need to do any of that because you can go to rockauto.com. Rock Auto is a family business serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Go to rockauto.com to shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. You know, recently my car broke down halfway on the way up to San Francisco and I'm dealing with all these mechanics and they're going online getting the parts. I was complaining about this at the office and they tell me, oh, you could have gone to Rock Auto. And now we have Rock Auto on the show, and that'll be what I do from, from now on. They have everything from engine control modules and brake parts to tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. Whether it's for your classic or it's for your daily driver, you can get everything you need in a few easy clicks. You get it delivered directly to your door. The rockauto.com catalog is unique. It is remarkably easy to navigate. You can just see all the parts available for your vehicle and choose the brand specifications and prices you prefer. This website is even navigable by me. And I don't know anything about cars, but I know what I need. And it, it's probably, as far as I'm concerned, other than the very, very fair pricing, the best feature of Rock Auto, and other than the fact that it's a family-owned business, and other than the fact that they have a great track record, the best feature is it's so easy to get the part you need on the website. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. Write Knowles, KNW, in their How Did You Hear About Us box. And that way they will know that we sent you. And that would be very good. Rockauto.com. Fill out Knowles in the How Did You Hear About Us. So now James O'Keefe actually has new recordings on the Epstein affair. We actually see the mainstream media lying and admitting they're lying and just going it, it, exposing the conspiracy of the conspiracy of the conspiracy theory. What does this mean for President Trump? It's good news. The more the media look foolish, the less people are going to believe what the media tell us. The media told us in 2016 that there was a 120,000% chance that Hillary would win, 0% chance that Trump would win. There's no reason even to go to the polls. We heard that the day before the election, I kid you not, 99% chance Hillary wins, 97% chance that Hillary wins. All the scientists who allegedly say that global warming is going to kill us all, I guess they all went and they were the only people polled and they all voted for Hillary. So 97% of people are going to vote for Hillary. And then it didn't happen. Then Trump won. And we decided, hmm, maybe we're not going to believe the media. And yet now for the past few weeks, we've been hearing more and more polls. Trump is going to lose. The majority of people support impeachment. The majority of people across America want to elect Joe Biden. Fox News of all places had a poll out that showed that not only is Biden leading the 2020 Democratic presidential primary race, he's beating Trump in a head-to-head -head matchup by 12 points. Wow. It's like the race is already over. Trump should start packing his bags, right? Head on down to Mar-a-Lago, which is now going to be his primary residence. We were told that Bernie Sanders has an eight-point lead on Donald Trump in a head-to-head -head matchup, 49 to 41. Elizabeth Warren has a five-point lead over President Trump, 46 to 41. Now, that's within the poll's margin of error, but still, Hillary, er, uh, Warren, wow, that was a Freudian slip. I said Hillary instead of Warren. Gosh, that tells you a lot about the campaign. She's still beating Trump. Pete Buttigieg is even tied with Trump. Pete Buttigieg, a mayor of a small town. And then, Hillary Clinton, actual Hillary Clinton, not Elizabeth Warren, Hillary 2.0, but Hillary 1.0, 
If Hillary got into the race, according to this Fox News poll, she has a two point edge. She would beat Trump by two points. So it's all over, right? No. The New York Times has another poll out that doesn't just look at the national landscape. Because I'm skeptical of all polls, as you know. I'm very, very skeptical of national polls because it's turned out that some of these polls have been seriously oversampling Democrats. But the polls that I start to get a little more interested in are the state polls because the election is not based on popular vote. It's not the United People of America. It's the United States of America. So the elections are done on the state level. And specifically, a handful of states, the battleground states, are going to determine the presidential election. So the New York Times drilled down into these battleground states and they realized something horrifying for the left, which is that when you look at the states that are going to decide the election, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Florida, Arizona, North Carolina, things are looking a lot tighter there. Doesn't matter if the Democratic nominee wins by 50 points in California or New York, the Democrats going to win California or New York. What matters are these battleground states. When you look in the battleground states, is Biden up 12 points on Trump? No. He's up one or two points in all states but North Carolina, where President Trump is actually up two points. So they're in a dead heat in all the battleground states. How about Bernie? Bernie is up three points in Michigan on Trump head to head. Bernie is tied with Trump in Wisconsin. Trump is up everywhere else in the battleground states. How about Elizabeth Warren? Trump beats Elizabeth Warren head to head in every battleground state. How about Pete Buttigieg? Give me a break. Pete Buttigieg, he doesn't even register. Trump is up on everybody. By the way, Trump is up on Liz Warren in the battleground states before she rolled out her ridiculous Medicare for all plan, which is going to be extraordinarily unpopular. $52 trillion. Not exactly going to play in Peoria, certainly not in these more moderate states. Trump is, uh, how about in Iowa? Iowa is one of these kind of bellwether states. Trump is up on every candidate in Iowa. The New York Times is actually the outlet now who's saying, hold on a second. Don't get too excited. Don't feel like you can just nominate the furthest left candidate. Don't watch out. Maybe let's not go all the way in for Liz Warren just yet. Hold on a second. But nobody's paying attention because the left is living in this fantasy world the fantasy world in which they believe that they can just tell you what reality is going to be and thereby force reality into existence. This is what every one of these grand poobahs at the mainstream media networks thinks. They say, we don't need to cover the news. We are not beholden to reality. We are not going to be honest stewards of reality and convey that to the people. We are going to, in our own imaginations, write the news, and by virtue of our narrative, we will force that on reality. That's the opposite of what the press is supposed to do. And the New York Times, which has been in the press for a long time, is beginning to say, gosh, I don't, that didn't work out for us in 2016. Maybe it's not going to work out for us in 2020. Say, it's, you're seeing the same thing now with the, the leading Democratic candidate, Joe Biden. You remember, the whole problem with Joe Biden is that he engaged in some serious corruption, or it looks a lot like he engaged in serious corruption. His son was engaging in corruption, and the press has been telling us there's nothing, there's no evidence of it. Joe Biden has been lying through his teeth, demonstrable lies in just the past few days. Said he never knew his son was on the board of that energy company in Ukraine, even though his son admitted that they talked about it. Said his son did nothing wrong, even though his son just resigned from the board basically said, I did nothing wrong and I'm sorry and I'll never do it again. Now we have new information about this corruption. We have new information out that the energy company that Joe Biden's son sat on the board of had did in fact push the Obama administration to end its corruption investigations in 2016. We'll get to that in a second. We'll get to the effect of impeachment on that race. Then an ex-evangelical pastor is lecturing other evangelicals about how terrible they are for supporting the Republican president. We'll get to that kind of hypocrisy. Eric Garcetti, mayor of Tent City, Los Angeles, says that LA is the model for dealing with homelessness. And so much more we have to get to. But first, I've got to say thank you to our friends over at Liquid IV. You know 
how much I love liquid IV. What is liquid IV? It's the fastest, most efficient way to stay hydrated. Now, look, I run a little hot, okay? I'm Sicilian. I've got kind of oily skin. So I would need liquid IV to stay hydrated anyway. Athletes love liquid IV because it just helps you hydrate two to three times faster and more efficiently than water alone with an added bonus of vitamin C, B3, B5, B12, and B6. I'm not the most athletic guy, okay? Uh, closest I come to playing a sport is poker. So maybe I smoke a cigar during that so I can exercise my lungs. But the other thing that liquid IV is very good for is if maybe you go out, you have a couple adult beverages, have a couple Coca-Colas with the boys, sometimes the next morning you don't feel so well. You, your head kind of hurts a little bit. You're dehydrated. So if I'm going to engage in a little reasonable behavior like that, you know, stay out a little too late, I will have a liquid IV. It's amazing. It works so incredibly well. I love it. It's just a little powder. You just take it out. You put the powder in the water. It tastes very good, unlike some of these other brands that don't taste that good. You drink it. You feel much more hydrated. Let's leave it at that. It's the fastest growing wellness brand. You can find them everywhere, even at Costco. You can find their hydration multiplier sold at all Costco's nationwide. Liquid IV provides the same hydration as drinking two to three bottles of water. I love it. Right now, my listeners get 25% off at liquidiv.com when you use my code Knowles, Ken W-L-E-S, at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order on Liquid IV's website. Go to liquidiv.com. Enter my promo code Knowles to get your savings and start getting better hydration. Liquidiv.com, promo code Knowles, Ken W-L-E-S. Don't wait. Start properly hydrating today. New information. Hunter Biden, the company that he was on the board of pushed the Obama administration to end the corruption investigation in 2016. A, a representative from Burisma, the energy company, sought to meet with the Undersecretary of State, Catherine Novelli, to discuss allegations of corruption and to maybe discuss a way out of it. This is according to the award-winning investigative journalist, John Solomon. This happened in February 2016. There were emails between the State Department officials, which stated, this is between State, State Department officials. Per our conversation, Karen Tramontano of Blue Star Strategies requested a meeting to discuss with Undersecretary Novelli remarks alleging barisma of corruption. She noted that two high profile U.S. citizens are affiliated with the company, including Hunter Biden as a board member. Tramontano would like to talk with Undersecretary Novelli about getting a better understanding about how the U.S. came to the determination that the company is corrupt. So there's a lot here. First of all, we know that the State Department considered this company corrupt. They're saying it right here in the memos. We know that Hunter Biden's presence on the board was being used by the company to get out of this corruption investigation and skirt the rules. That's also in the email. And yet, the media are going to lie to us and say, there's no evidence, there's no big deal. This is it. This is the evidence. We have it right here in black and white. But some people aren't going to believe what they see with their own eyes. They're going to believe the narratives crafted by the mainstream media, which is a very bad idea that will mislead you, that will force you to believe fantasies, like the fantasy that Jeffrey Epstein killed himself. Uh, we will get to why the ex-evangelical pastors don't understand the evangelical movement. We will get to Christian support of President Trump. We'll get to homelessness. We'll get to a whole lot more fake news narratives. But first, I've got to say goodbye to Facebook and YouTube. You know, the founder and leader of ISIS is dead, thanks to America's goodest dog. So you can now get the shirt that'll turn even the most hardcore cat fans into dog lovers. That shirt is the Zero Bark 30 shirt. Let's see it here. Zero Bark 30, available now at the Daily Wire Amazon store. It's one of my favorite shirts we've ever made. A huge fan of it. So head on over there, get your Zero Bark 30 shirt, and we will just keep the pun apparel coming. Dailywire.com, we'll be right back with a lot more. So an ex-evangelical pastor is coming out and saying that evangelicals who support Trump are humiliating themselves, embarrassing themselves. They are damaging the gospel. 
What this guy is doing, Joshua Harris, is one of my least favorite behaviors in politics, which is when people who are not in a particular movement, not in a particular mindset, not in a particular religion, start criticizing the people who are in that organization for failing to live up to their own standards, usually without any basis in reality whatsoever. Here is ex-evangelical Joshua Harris's claim. It sounds like you think the church has made a massive mistake by becoming so identified with President Trump. I think it's in- incredibly damaging to the gospel and to the church. And you give advice, you still give advice. Uh, how do they, how <laughs> still do they give advice? How do they <laughs> unwind that? What should they do? I don't think it's going to end well. And I think, you know, you look back at uh, you look back at the Old Testament and the relationship between the prophets and really bad leaders and kings. And oftentimes it was it's not something you unwind because it's it's actually in the scriptures presented as God's judgment on the false religion of the day. You think Christians today who are embracing President Trump are due for a judgment? I think it is the judgment. I think it is part of the judgment. What do you mean by that? To have a leader like Trump, I think, is in itself part of of the indictment that that this is the leader that you want and maybe deserve that represents a lot of who you are. What? What? verbal gobbledygook is that? Obviously, this man is very confused, so let's try to clear up some of the confusion. He says that conservatives supporting Trump is damaging to the gospel. You cannot damage the gospel. Christ conquered death on the cross and rose from the dead three days later. You can't damage that. As C.S. Lewis pointed out, an atheist can no more diminish God's glory than a lunatic can diminish the sun by writing darkness on the walls of his cell. You can't damage the gospel. You can engage in heresy, you can disbelieve, you can turn away from God, but you can't damage the gospel. The gospel happened. It's done. Our Redeemer lives. Then he says that uh, people who voted for Donald Trump are calling judgment down upon them. Let's just, rem- let's just remind people what it means to vote for Donald Trump. You had two choices in 2016. A woman who was campaigning on killing a million babies a year and taking all- away all of your constitutional rights and taking away your religious liberty. And Trump, a guy who said he wouldn't do those things and would protect life and would protect religious liberty. We knew how wicked Hillary Clinton was. We weren't quite sure how wicked Donald Trump was. We knew that he lived a sort of colorful life and was a very broken man, as are we all. But those were the choices. Kill a million babies a year, take away your constitutional rights, take away your religious liberty, protect life, keep your religious liberty, keep your rights. Maybe. That's not a hard choice. That's not a wrong choice. That's not an evil choice. That's not calling down judgment. The right choice was to vote for Trump. And If this guy is upset about that because he didn't do that or he thought Trump would be worse than he is or whatever, okay, fine, I get it. It was a difficult choice in so much as Trump is such a weird political candidate that it allowed people to become confused. I get it. That's fine. But that was the right choice. And then you know it's the right choice because he's asked by the interviewer, what judgment is being called down upon people for this? And the guy says, "I, I, I uh, I don't know. It's We'll have to see. It's not going to end well. The judgment is having Trump president. So now he's saying that the judgment is going to be that people get what they asked for. Okay. If this is the judgment, not so bad. Could things be better in the country? Sure. Are things a lot better than they would have been under President Clinton? Yeah, a lot better in every way. Okay. That's fine judgment. He's obviously very confused. He isn't seeing moral questions very clearly. And perhaps that has something to do with the fact that he's made a complete disaster 
of his own life, as he explains in the same interview. As a very young man, you wrote a book that sold a million copies. Mm. Yeah, it was called I Kiss Dating Goodbye, and that got a lot of attention because it was a, a radical idea. We shouldn't just not have sex, we should stop dating because dating is leading to us uh, making these mistakes. So the first time you kissed your wife was? At the altar, yeah. I got married uh, about a year and a half after that book was released and then dove into being a pastor and pastored a church for, uh, for 17 years. I was a pastor there. And then this summer you went on Instagram and said essentially, I don't believe. Mm. By all the measurements that I have for defining a Christian, mm. I'm not a Christian. What do you mean by that? I was really just trying to be honest about the fact that all the ways that I had defined faith and Christianity, that I was no longer choosing to live according to those. Most significantly, the decision that my wife and I made to end our marriage. Some people were angry. A lot of people were angry, understandably. Understandably, at least he has a little self-awareness there. Because what he's doing is, it's not just Joshua Harris who does this, a lot of people do this. A lot, you will always hear, every single day, if you go on the internet, you will hear atheists criticizing Christians for supporting Donald Trump because they say this is unchristian. These are people who know nothing about Christianity or who at the very least are extraordinarily confused about Christianity, who don't believe in Christianity, who don't think Christianity is true or good, assailing people who do believe Christianity is true or good and who know much more about Christianity than they do for supporting Donald Trump because they say it's unchristian. How about like one ounce of humility? If you don't, it's not a big deal if you don't understand something. All of us don't understand most things. But just a little humility. Instead of saying, you're a terrible Christian because you do something that I don't quite understand and you also profess a faith that I don't understand and don't believe in and don't think is good. But you're bad for that reason, for some, for some reason. How about a little humility? I, I hear this, there's a guy, John Fugel, saying, who I sort of like, he's a liberal radio guy, who refers to people who support Donald Trump as fake Christians. John Fugel saying knows absolutely nothing about Christianity. He knows actually less than nothing because he knows a very little bit and a little learning is a dangerous thing. So for instance, he thinks that the scriptures defend abortion. And this is because there's one translation of one verse out of context of the book of Numbers that could be misinterpreted to refer to a miscarriage rather than infertility. One translation among zillions of translations of the Bible. And he'll twist that and say that everybody who supports Trump is a bad Christian. That isn't true. You, before you cast aspersions like that, you should just have the intellectual humility and the curiosity to learn something yourself. What Joshua Harris says there is a lot of people are upset at him because he's left the church, he's left his wife, he's left his faith, and he made himself out to be this great evangelical Christian leader. This guy always had profound theological errors in what he was peddling, like very deep theological errors. He was the guy who came up with the idea that you shouldn't date. He says how I kissed dating goodbye and created this whole purity culture that is ahistorical and deeply misunderstands the nature of the faith. And then surprise, surprise, he ran into troubles with his faith because his version of it was unsatisfactory to him, was insufficient, was inadequate. Now he's left the faith and people are rightly angry because he's causing scandal. A scandal is not just when a politician gets caught with his secretary. A scandal is when you lead people away by your example because you've done something wrong. This is one of my great incentives not to sin is I have no, I mean, not no problem, but I could easily be tempted to sin if it were just involving me. And then, you know, I go to confession and I repent of it and I'm very sorry. And I go back to living a, my life. 
But it doesn't just involve you, especially if you make yourself a public persona like Joshua Harris did. Because by your example, you could lead people away from the truth and lead people away from the faith. And that's a very bad thing. So I'm, I'm glad that he has that, that slight awareness. But then he immediately turns it around and says, and by the way, if you vote for Trump, you're a terrible person and destroying Christianity. Hey, buddy, you left your church, you left your wife, you left your faith. I'm not even attacking you for it. Obviously, you've got some deep confusion and a lot of suffering going on and you need to figure your life out. But maybe you're not the best guy to lecture all of us on Christianity. Maybe you're not the best guy to lecture all of us on how to live your life, okay? You did that for your entire life and then it didn't work out for you and you led a lot of people down a lot of bad paths. Maybe step back a little bit. Same thing with the media, what we were talking about all day. The mainstream media, which lie to us all the time, which are caught in scandal, actual scandal, because they're the ones who purport to tell the truth and they are caught covering up the truth and spreading lies, which destroys our faith in the mainstream media, destroys our faith in these institutions that we should be able to trust and leads us to believe internet memes because the internet memes are truer than the mainstream media. Those guys have the audacity to say democracy dies in darkness, Washington Post. Facts first, CNN. We just report the facts. We're defending them. No, you're not. You're not. Which is fine. You're going through a period of intense corruption. Sort your affairs. Get your house in order before you all lecture us. I just have no patience for it anymore. I have no pa- Eric Garcetti, the mayor of my city. I live in Tent City, USA. I live in Los Angeles. I was on a news program the other day on the Fox channel here. And Eric Garcetti had just gone on the show. And he was asked by the host of the show, Alex Michelson, what are you doing about homeless, homelessness? Under Mayor Garcetti's tenure, homelessness has increased dramatically. It has skyrocketed. In just one year, 2017 to 2018, homelessness increased in LA County by 13%. And then in LA City by 16%. 16% in one year. And Garcetti says with a straight face, There's no question LA is the model for dealing with homelessness. How can you say that? How can you gaslight us all like that? Just a little, look, if Eric Garcetti came out there and said, hey, homelessness is a really hard problem. We're having a lot of trouble with it. We're being hampered by state and county regulations. It's just, we're we're working on it. We're trying to get more cops on the beat to bring people in and we're going to do our best and make it happen. At least then we could respect the guy. But he, he can't do that. And this actually, this story does tie in with another story. We're going to have to get to it tomorrow. Because it's, it's just that, that gaslighting is so offensive to all of us. It, it leads you to, to distrust all of your institutions. That is the real scandal because I actually, as much as I love the memes, as much as I love that Epstein didn't kill himself, as much as I love all the wild west of information that we have now, I actually would prefer to live in a country where we can have some faith in our institutions, where we can trust the media to not lie to us every single night, where we can trust the government not to spy on its own citizens and to spy on rival presidential campaigns like the Obama administration obviously did. I would like to live in a government where the courts support the rule of law and and defend our constitution, where half of the country didn't hate itself, where half of the country didn't protest the American flag. I, I would rather live in that country because then we could talk about politics less. You know, uh, C.S. Lewis, to bring him up again, had a line on this where he said, a country that doesn't talk about politics at all is in danger of dying because, obviously Lewis wrote it more eloquently than me, but I'm paraphrasing. It's in danger of dying because in the same way, a sick person who doesn't pay attention to what's going on with his health could die as well. But a country that spends all of its time talking about politics countries such as ours, where we can't trust our institutions, where we don't believe anything that the mainstream media or the establishment are telling us, a country that spends all its time talking about politics is already so thoroughly sick. The sickness is already through it that it's on the verge of being killed already. 
much like Jeffrey Epstein, who did not kill himself. That's our show. I'm Michael Knowles. This is The Michael Knowles Show. I'll see you tomorrow. The Michael Knowles Show is produced by Rebecca Dobkowitz and directed by Mike Joyner. Executive producer, Jeremy Boring. Senior producer, Jonathan Hay. Our supervising producer is Mathis Glover. And our technical producer is Austin Stevens. Assistant director, Pavel Wydowski. Edited by Danny D'Amico. Audio is mixed by Mike Coromina. Hair and makeup is by Jesua Olvera. And our production assistant is Nick Sheehan. The Michael Knowles Show is a Daily Wire production. Copyright Daily Wire 2019. Hey everybody, it's Andrew Claven, host of The Andrew Claven Show. You know, some people are depressed because the American Republic is collapsing, the end of days is approaching, and the moon has turned to blood. But on The Andrew Claven Show, that's where the fun just gets started. So come on over to The Andrew Claven Show and laugh your way through the apocalypse with me, Andrew Claven. <laughs>